We're working on the chapter eight practice test now. I'm gonna go through these and work them out for you. I definitely recommend that you do them first on your own and then come back and check them with the videos, any ones that you didn't get to match because you really don't learn a whole lot by writing them down with someone else working them. So you kind of learn the little quirks and things by working at first. So we have interests first, and as you, as I told you when we were going over this, we do give you the formula in this class, and the next class we will not, so you'll have to know these formulas. So we can enjoy them, having them. Um, the one thing you do need to know for the test is what each of the letters stand for. Just to remind you, P is principal which means the original amount invested or the original amount you borrowed. R is the interest rate, and remember that's as a decimal. N is the number, so each letter makes sense why it's that. So A is the amount it grows to, P is the principal, R is the rate as a decimal place, N is the number of compounding periods. And then remember how I said it's a really good idea to write this in the formula to remind yourself, one, that it is an exponent, and two, that you, because there's two things multiplied there, two factors, it does have to be in parentheses. Otherwise, a calculator doesn't know to take them both as the exponent. So N is the number of compounding periods, and T is the time in years. And this A is amount, P is the principal, R is the rate as a decimal, and T is the time in years. And remember, E we, is it a constant. It's called a universal constant, just like pi. And you plug that in using your calculator. So this one, remember, is used if you can count the number of compounding periods, like semi-annually, quarterly, daily, weekly, where this one is used for infinite number of compounding periods, which we call continuous compounding. So anytime it says compounded continuously, that's when we know to switch from this formula to this. Otherwise, if we can count how many compounding periods there are a year, semi-annually two, quarterly four, then we use the first formula. So you have 3000 to invest. Which investment yields the greater return over 10 years? 6.5 compounded semi-annually. So that will go with this formula because semi means every half year. So this is twice a year. Or 6% compounded continuously, which means this one. So let's see which one gives us the greater yield. So the first one, the amount is going to be the principal, how much we invest, 3,000, parentheses, 1 plus the interest rate. Remember, the rate has to be divided by 100 because per cent, per means divide, cent is the root word for century, 100. So when we divide by 100, the decimal place moves two places to the left. So point zero six five when we move it two places to the left over in the number of compounding periods, which is two, because semi means every half year. Then we do caret, then we do parentheses, and then n times t. N we said is two times t, which is time. 10 years. So get that one ready for the calculator and let's go ahead and write the other one down that way we only have to pick up the calculator once. So for comp compounded continuously we have P the principal 3000 E and remember the calculator gives you this on this one so you don't have to type it in but I usually do just to be consistent and then R is rate, and we said this rate is 6. Move it two places, because you're dividing by 100. It turns into 0.06 times T time, which is 10 years.
So now we have them both ready for the calculator. So now we can just pick up the calculator once to do these. Hmm, let's see if we can do it over here. So we have 3,000, and you type it just like you see it, parentheses 1 plus 0 0.065 divided by 2. Close your parentheses. Caret to show the calculator. Your next step is an exponent, and then 2 times 10. Or if you didn't want to do parentheses, you could have done 2 times 10 and made it 20 and left off the parentheses. So round it to two decimal places because money's always automatically rounded. It'd be $5,687.51 because the one followed by a three says keep it one. So 5,000 and we need a dollar sign. You have to label all your problems. $5,687.51. Okay, now let's do the next one. So 3,000, oops, off the paper. So 3,000, whoops, not another three. And then we have the E, so we do second LN. The carrots open for us, the parentheses open, so we just type in 0.06 times 10, close the parentheses, and that's 5466.35, but 5 followed by 6 says turn it into 6, so it'll be 36. So remember, you're not just finding two answers, you have to answer the question, and it says... Which investment yields the greater return? So we can see this one yields a greater return. So that would be what? 6.5 compounded semi-annually. 6.5% compounded semi-annually. So that would be the best investment. Okay, next we're going to do the compositions. You guys remember those? I think that was, was that in the very first section, 8-1? I want to say yes, I think so. So it's been a while since we've done these. So if you remember right, when we have an open circle like that, the first thing we do is write F of G of X. Because having it in this form then tells us what to do. Oh, we start with the innermost parentheses. So we take g of x out and we put what it's equal to in. Because remember, compositions are really like substitution problems. So keep the f there. And we're evaluating f at 3x minus 1. What that means is everywhere we see an x in f, and I can see two of them, we need to replace it with 3x minus 1. So 3x minus 1 needs to go here. And probably the biggest mistake I see on the test on this one is students plug it into the first x, and they don't plug it into the second. Well, this is the value for every single x in the problem. So we have quantities, so it does need to be in parentheses since we have that squared. So this is going to be 3x minus 1 squared plus 3x minus 1. And you can put the second one in parentheses or not, but there's no multiplication or exponent outside. So hopefully you recognize that this is a FOIL problem. 
Remember how we said one of them is almost always a FOIL? Two terms squared. So that means I need to write that twice to FOIL it. And then once I get the answer, I can add like terms. So this is going to be 3x minus 1 times 3x minus 1. And be sure and still bring this down because otherwise you're going to get so involved in the FOIL and you forget about this. So just keep bringing it down with each step. So foiling will get 9x squared. From O outer, we get negative 3x. From I inner, we get negative 3x. From L last, we get positive 1. And then plus 3x minus 1. So now we're ready to finish the problem. So minus 3x plus 3x, I can see that's going to cancel. So that's kind of nice. So it looks like our answer is going to be 9x squared uh, minus 3x. Oh. And then these cancel too. Wow. Well, so that's it. 9x squared minus 3x. So checking that. Yes, it is. There we go. Okay. So next we're doing the other scenario. So this one is g of f of x. So this one, we write it like this, g of f of x. And then we say, what's f of x? Oh, it's x squared plus x. So we're going to take that out and fill in with what it's equal to, x squared plus x. And remember, when you go to write the nested parentheses, you keep it in the exact same order. So this says, go into g. Wherever you see an x, plug in x squared plus x. So you're literally just plugging one function into the other. And students always ask me, how do you know which one to plug into which? Well, that's why I do this step. And then I know. Don't guess, oh, on this one, am I plugging this into this or this into this? Because you have a 50-50 chance of getting it right. So that's why I write this step. So then it tells me, go into G. Replace the x with x squared plus x. So we have the 3. And then take out the x and put in x squared plus x. And then we have minus 1. So that's going to turn into 3x squared plus 3x. And then the minus 1 at the end. So one's usually quite a bit easier than the other, and that was definitely the easier of the two. And then we have where we're asked to evaluate. So again, the minute you see a composition, your first step is to write the nested parentheses. So g of f of negative 2. And once you get that form in, then you go, oh, I know what the next step is. We always go to the innermost parentheses first. So that says, go down here and figure out what f of negative 2 is. You've been doing this since pre-algebra, evaluating functions. So you just have to get it in this form. So keep it in the same order, but with nested parentheses. And you go inside the parentheses and do that first. So I'm going to go into f, which is x squared plus x, and I'm going to replace all the x's with negative 2. So because I'm plugging in a negative, I do have to keep it in parentheses. So this will be negative 2 squared plus negative 2. And make sure both places the negative 2 is in parentheses. So I went into f, replaced the x's with negative 2. So that is negative 2 times negative 2, 4 minus 2, which is 2. So now I know that f of negative 2 is 2. And we'll do the second part after the in the next video.